Hey everyone, how's it going? Before we get started, I just want to say a couple things. First of all, what we're going to be learning about in this video is Composer, working with APIs, and working with libraries. Composer is a package manager similar to NPM for Node.js, but this one is for PHP. There's going to be a link in the description for downloading Composer, so make sure before you get started here, you download that and it's all set up. One thing I'd like to say is if you're using Composer and you get an error about an extension that's missing, what you can do is go into your php.ini file and just uncomment that extension. Then you should be all set. I didn't get any issues with mine, so hopefully you won't either, but if you do, that's the fix for it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, without further ado, let's open up our folder like I did with mine inside of Visual Studio Code. All right, hopping right into it. Let's make a new file in our new directory. And let's call it main.php. Now, before I get into the coding, I'm going to briefly talk about something. What I want to talk about here is HTTP requests. I'm going to very briefly explain the concepts of a GET and a POST request. Now, there's many types of HTTP requests, and these are what's used to communicate with the server. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is Git requests. Now you actually use these all the time, every day. You just don't know it. Whenever you type something in, so let's go to youtube.com, you're actually making a Git request and you're saying, hey, I want to get this, right? And it's returning you the basic youtube.com homepage. That's really all a Git request is. So we're going to be making some Git requests to APIs, and instead of getting a home page like this, which we could get, don't get me wrong, if we wanted to make a Git request in the code, it would return all of this HTML and everything, but we're not going to be doing that. When we work with APIs, what we're going to be doing is getting data back, and the server is going to know that, because on the server, on the backend side, you can program your API however you want. Right? YouTube is saying a GET request to this should return HTML, and this is what it should return. So when we send that GET request, this is what we get, which makes sense. Now, POST requests are a little different, and I'm not actually going to demonstrate them right now, but a POST request is essentially sending data. Instead of getting data and pulling it, you're pushing it, right? You're sending data somewhere. So let's say when we made a new video, or even better yet, when you make an account and you fill out that form, you're actually posting that data. Then that data goes to the server and the server creates the account for you. Lastly, I want to talk about query strings. If I search the title for one of my videos, there it is. Um, you'll see here there's a question mark and then it says search query equals this. Right? And I'm just going to copy this whole link for a minute and go back in the text editor and paste it. I'm going to add the PHP tag and I'm going to comment it out. Now, notice this. There's a question mark, search underscore query, which equals something. This is what's known as a query parameter. This is a great way to pass data back and forth between the front end and the back end. Right? I said I want to search for this, and YouTube's going to say, okay, this is what they want to search for. And then when it sends that request, what I could do if I was in PHP is I could say dollar score $get, which is a global variable, brackets, and then in quotes, I could just type in the value, which here is search underscore query. Now, this is going to equal what this equals which is going to let me on the server side communicate with the front end. We're not really going to be doing this, but it's important to know it because we will be doing it later on when we make the backend API. But it's not really needed for the crypto bot, which is going to be the main focus for this. So I'm going to delete all this. That might not make total sense, but once we start coding, it should make a little bit more sense. I'll explain it in more depth. What I'm going to do now is open up my terminal. You can do that by holding control and pressing tilde, which is the key to the left of the one. And we're going to be using Composer to download some packages. So if you type composer space dash v, 
you should get this whole message, which shows this cool little composer symbol. If you don't, that means you don't have composer installed. I'm going to leave a link for the install in the description of this video. It's a pretty simple install. You shouldn't have any trouble with it. One thing I will say, though, is if you install it and it's not working right away, you might just have to restart your program or terminal or you can restart your whole computer and give it a shot. Sometimes it takes a little bit for them to know that we actually do have it installed. Now inside of here, I'm going to require a package called guzzle HTTP. So I'm going to say composer require guzzle HTTP forward slash guzzle. And if, if it gives you this message, you can just say no. It probably won't, but it will for me because of the way I have my file set up. Awesome, that's all installed. While we are here, we are also going to install the CoinGecko library. So let's say Composer, require, codenix, dash, sv, forward slash, CoinGecko, dash, api. Awesome, that's all set too. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make two files. We're going to make one file, let's call this api.php, and another file called library.php. These are the two things that we're going to be learning in this tutorial, how to work with an API and how to work with a library. Now the first thing we're going to focus on is api.php, which is going to be where we're going to learn our H API. At the top, I'm going to put a PHP tag, and I'm just going to comment out a link. This link can be found in the description. We'll get to what it does in a minute though. In the main.php file, I'm going to show you how to work with other files. This can be done by adding it to the main file. So what we're going to say here is first, we're going to say require underscore once. This basically just says, do not run this program if it's not there. If the file doesn't exist. We could say include instead which will allow the program to run even if it can't find the file, but we don't want that. We need the file. And the once says only give it to us once. So if somewhere else in our code we try to bring it in, we won't be bringing it in twice. Now, in quotations, what we're going to say is period forward slash. This basically just means where we are right now. So right now we're here in main.php at the root of the directory. We're going to say vendor forward slash. Now that we're inside vendor, what we want is this autoload PHP file. Whenever you use Composer, you need to do this. Basically what this is going to do is it's just going to pull in all of the files that we need for the packages that we just downloaded. But we also are going to want to get our API.php. So again, we can require once. Now this one isn't in another folder, right? So we can just say period forward slash API dot PHP. And then we can run it to make sure it's all working. Let's say PHP main dot PHP. And perfect, it's working, there's no errors. One thing I should mention too is, let's say hypothetically speaking, we were in the autoload dot PHP and we wanted to pull this in. What we could type is period period slash. Now what period period slash does is it essentially says, take me up one above, right? Take me up one level. So if we're in here and we need to get out of this folder into the folder before it, we say period period slash and now we'll be right here. Now inside of here, let's make a function. Let's call it get API data. This function is going to take in a URL, which is going to essentially be this URL. So I want to show you something real quick. Remember what I said about get requests? Well, if I paste that URL here, you'll see we get this interesting stuff, right? This is the data that I was talking about earlier. 
Like I said, you don't always get a web page. Sometimes you get this data. This is what's known as JSON or JavaScript object notation, which is basically just the way that JavaScript objects appear. Now we're going to want to get this, right? Because what this URL is doing is it's giving us the current price of Bitcoin. And it has all of this nifty data too. It has the code, it has the symbol, the rate, the description, and we want to get it all and then do stuff with it. So we can do that using what's known as Guzzle HTTP. It can be used by saying client equals new backslash guzzle HTTP backslash client. Now, this is the package that we downloaded earlier, the very first one. And we're going to be using this to make our requests. So, inside of this function, let's say response equals client arrow request. Then let's say get. And then we're going to pass the URL. This should also take in the client. Sorry about that. And then what we can say here is echo, response, an error, and get body. So now what we can do is call the function. We can say get API data and pass it the client and then pass it the URL. And again, the URL is just going to be this. We're going to have to make it into a string. And let's not forget our semicolon here. And then we can run it. And there we go. We're actually getting all of the JSON data right here. Now, something I should mention is that this is just a string. What we need to do is take this string and turn it into a PHP object, right? Because we're not using JavaScript. So that does no good for us. So let's set this equal to a variable. Let's say data equals. And let's make call a function here that's built into PHP. It's called JSON decode. And we're going to pass this the body. Now let's bar dump the data. Beautiful. This is what we want here. This is a PHP object. What we can do in here is we can get the price, right? That's probably the main thing that we're going to want. Now, let's set data equal to this. And instead of bar dumping it, let's return the data. Then let's make another function. Let's say function get price, which will take in the data. And it's going to return a price, right? So we can call this, pass the data. Let's echo out the price. All right. Now let's look at this object we have. What we need to look for here are the breakpoints. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So you'll see there's an object called time, which contains all of this. That's not really what we want. What we're trying to get at the end of the day here is the rate. So the first accessible part of it is going to be BPI. So just like we did in the first part of the tutorial, Let's say data arrow BPI 
And then we're going to need another arrow because this BPI is also an object. We're going to want the USD one, right? Because at least for me, I live in America. Capital U, capital S, capital D. This is also an object. And then let's grab the rate. Now, if we run this, there we go. We got the current rate of Bitcoin, which is ever so fluctuating. I don't know how good this API is, so it might not be the best. So it might not actually get data that often. It looks like it's not since it hasn't changed. Oh, never mind. Maybe it is all right. And there you go. Bitcoin just jumped a decent amount as it does because it's Bitcoin. All right, now I'm going to go back to my main.php. That's all we're going to do here for APIs. And I'm going to switch this API to library. I'm going to start working with the library now, which we kind of already did for the API, right? We did work with the Guzzle HTTP library in order to make our requests. So in a way, we've already done this. But I want to go a little bit more into depth on working with the library because this is a very simple one. And we only use one thing, really, which was just to get a URL. One other thing that I'd like to make clear here is this program would not work if requiring the API was before requiring the auto load. This is because we're relying upon what came in the auto load. We're going to rely upon it again with the CoinGecko library. Now we can't access the CoinGecko library if we don't import it first, right? So you can think of requiring as basically just pulling it into this main line, right? So this file that looks like it doesn't have anything in it really has all of this code in it and it had all of this code in it, right? And that's just temporary. Now all the API code is gone. So if we run it, we get nothing again because now it's looking at the library, which is empty. But we're going to fix that right now. We're going to make a PHP bracket. And in here, we're going to say use code nixsv backslash coin gecko api backslash coin gecko client and then we can say client equals new coin gecko client Let's run it to make sure we typed everything right. Awesome. No problems so far. Now, I'm not that familiar with this API, so just so you know, in case you're wondering how I'm getting all this, I'm actually using their GitHub documentation, which shows all of the methods that you can use. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a list of all the supported coins, which you can see here. So what I'm going to say is exactly what we just saw, data. Actually, let's put a function first. Get data. Then we can call it. And inside of this, we're going to say what we just saw. So data equals client arrow coins arrow get list. Oh, sorry, I forgot to pass the client. And that didn't give us any problems. Awesome. Now let's fire dump the data. Let's see what we're working with here. Whoa, that is a lot of data. Wow. All right, so I'm clearing, I clear, I just cleared this all out by saying clear because that was way too much data. Let's just grab the very first one. Awesome. So this is the very first one. It's ZOC. Let's grab the 10th one. See what that is. Interesting. What we can do is let's say we want Bitcoin, right? The symbol for Bitcoin is usually BTC, right? So let's say 
coins equals, and that will equal all the data. Now let's loop through all of them. Okay, now let's say we want to get value. It is not objects, so we're going to grab it like this, and we're going to get the symbol. Let's make a symbol array. And then let's call the PHP function array underscore push with symbol array and symbol. Now if we var dump the symbol array, we're going to see something a little bit more friendly to read. I'm going to end it early too because there's still going to be an insane amount. Insane amount. <laughs> there are so many symbols here. Okay. So what if we wanted one specific symbol, right? Let's say if. Let's say if symbol. Now I want Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is going to be BTC, right? I don't know if it'll be capitalized or not though. So let's say or symbol equals BTC. Then we'll push it. Run this again. And there you go. You see we just got one single thing. Let's push the whole value instead of just the symbol. We get that the ID is Bitcoin, the symbol is BTC, and the full name is Bitcoin. So this would be how we would grab an individual one. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, this also included the price, right? This could be a great way to get price. One thing that I want to make sure that I properly explain here is the array underscore push function. So what that's doing is that's pushing a new value into an array and it pushes it at the bottom, right? So if you already had a zero index, it would become the one index. Now you can't just simply add something to an array like you would maybe add something to a number, right? Two plus two. You can't do array plus array. Well, you can call another function called array merge, which basically does the same thing. But the point is, this is a very easy way to add a value to an array, and you're going to be using this very frequently when you work with arrays. All right, now that we have this, let's get the price of our individual one. So we can do this by first removing this and let's give this if statement some brackets. Now let's first get the ID. So let's say ID equals value. It's an array so we're going to get it like this. Then we just want this ID client simple arrow get price and then we're just going to pass the ID and we're going to say we want this in US dollars. And then let's echo out the price. We can get rid of this bar dump too. Run it. Oh, let's bar dump it. Apparently, this isn't a string. That's the error that we just got. Awesome, so we do have the price here. So instead of bar dumping it though, we want to echo it, right? So let's echo it out, but let's get to the price. So this is an array. Let's grab Bitcoin. And then let's grab USD. And there we go, we have our price. That is working with a library. It's quite simple. Really the important thing is that you remember the documentation. That's where I just got that line too, right? And I'll leave a link to this in the description if you want to play around with it for a bit. And this is actually going to be the end of the video. I tried to make this one a little bit shorter. 
Hopefully I did a good job with that so it's a bit more manageable while still being easy to understand. Let me know if I did. The next one is going to be on SQL and databases. I think I'm going to make it into an optional two-parter with the first part being for those who know nothing about SQL or databases. And the second part is just going to be teaching you how to use SQLite with PHP. But that's for the future, so we'll worry about it then. I hope you all have a great day. Take it easy.